everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. If I haven't yet said it in a video yet, Happy New Year. I am back today, doing a little bit of work. I spent um, a good amount of time on New Year's Day working on this. So this is the book that was the the book cover um, from the How to Use Up, Using Up an Entire Big Book series that I just completed, um, where I went through, pulled all the pages out, showed you how to select um, content, how to use as much of the book as possible, um, and made some ephemera. So now I have this book and what I wanted to do with it is make um, like an accordion style folio journal. Um, so what I have are these, um, I thrifted a whole stack of these. So what they are is like they're a folder and you open them and they're actually quite dynamic. So on this side, they have this tab uh, or this pocket with this table, which I think is just nice. So every one of them has a pocket. They also have one of these um, perma clips. So they're two pieces of metal that bend up. You can thread paper with two holes onto them and then pop it down to hold it in. Um, and then the other thing they have here is a tab at the bottom. So theoretically, I guess you would close it, you know, you would you bring this tab up here. Um, you know, you could put your, um, or like a duotang sort of, you could put your papers in, you would have this if you wanted to turn it into a pocket, like they're just a dynamic office sort of supply. So um, I was going to coffee dye some of them. But then I kind of got on this collaging fixation a bit because, you know, I really love, let me just dump this out, I really love how the, the collaging on the book itself with all of my beautiful dyed paper scraps and little old book pages from the 1800s, I really love how the whole thing looks. Now, what I do know is the spine is going to have to go bye bye So we're gonna be cutting this because we're going to have to create a whole new spine for it. So I think I'll actually just do that now um, while I have the book here. Might as well just get that done. I'm going to just do that with my razor knife here. Okay, one. Okay, put the knife away, always put the knife away. If you're looking for this book, it's called Amazing Bird Facts and it's a large book um, from Mallard Press. So now we just have these edges, which will be entirely covered when I do make the spine. Okay. So, just looking in, now I realize I can choose what side of this I want to be on the outside. Okay, but anyhow, let's put this aside and I will show you what I've been working on. <clears throat> so I'm thinking the theme for this folio is going to be birds like bird watching birds just birds in general because it was a bird book it has a big owl on the front and i think everyone just really loves birds so what that means fun enough is that i get to make a bunch of bird ephemera which i'm really into because i'm a bird book hoarder <laughs> and i need to pare it down so i took five of these um white folders that I just showed you and I entirely collaged them back and front entirely. I left all of the pockets um, intact so hopefully you can see there's a pocket there um, because you know that's entirely like useful to have. Um, I left most of these on. I think I took one off. Then I have attached them by stitching and gluing some fabric down the center here. So what I did was I attached two of them together in an accordion style. Um, I left the, the flat, pardon me, here on this one because I think I want to make a flip down there. So that's one. 
Um, so it's going to be bound into the book on this, this one edge. Then in the center, I have another one and it's just a plain one, exactly as it was just collaged. That will be the center signature, if you will. Um, so I will, I will bind it with this and I'm only going to put three signatures in this, but the first and the second are going to be accordions. So I did this one exactly the same again, collaged, left the pocket, left the flap. We have this here um, on this side, the pocket, again, this, and here I've cut the flap off. Um, so this one will accordion out the other direction. So I feel like this would be a good book because, you know, you can just, you can be looking at just one page at a time, but if you're doing some kind of like a, you know, a more advanced bird study, you can flip this whole thing out if you want to, you know, or it's hard to show you this on camera. I, I'd have to back it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I think you get the drift though, is that, you know, you can look at one page at a time. Um, you can, you know, do your work here. So because this is a busy background and I think I'm going to need a lot of pockets, a lot of ephemera, I'm just going to go page by page, sort of. I had thought about using some of my ephemera from the Dis uh, the Defemerember series that I just completed, but I'm not going to, I'm going to save that for something else, I think. I haven't quite decided what journal I want to do with that. I know I want it to be a winter lore type journal. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just going to go from, I have some beautiful scraps like this where we have like a bird and a squirrel. You know, I imagine that to be a beautiful upper tuck pocket. I've been sort of saving it for that. Um, and so we're just going to get started making some ephemera and having fun doing so. So actually I think I will start with this one and with the intention of making it a pocket. Um, so first thing I think I will need will be um, some scraps. So I've got my scraps over off camera, you can't see them. <clears throat> but I think what I'll first do is just kind of freeform tear this edge a little bit. I do sort of want to keep most of the, um, the straight edge because I think it will be nice against the edge of the book. But I don't want the cut here that's right there. So I'm good with that. Then thinking about maybe how I might want to use let's tear that away. Um, a bit of book page. I've been using up so many scraps, it's been great. <laughs> now I gotta find a bit of cardstock, I think. A scrap of cardstock that roughly is the same shape, which is this. Perfect. I'm really trying to just use up scraps and like <laughs> bring it down a notch. So I think what I will do now is just start pulling a little bit of a background of music paper on the cardstock just to kind of frame this a little. This glue stick is grumpy with me because I left the cap off, so I may need to switch glue sticks. It's going to be probably too sticky. We'll see. Um, I left the cap off. It happens. <laughs> Yesterday, I, <laughs> in my, um, I, I wanted to go for my daily kind of walk outside with the kids and it was definitely like a winter thaw kind of day because we'd had snow then yesterday we had rain and then we just had muck and mud and um we found a new little um place to walk and oh my goodness like it all started with the dog so <laughs> i have a chihuahua named toasty and he is a great little dog and my son who's two likes to walk him and the two of them are comical together it's very cute just seeing this little person walking this little dog it's like some kind of miniature cutie scape that I live in or something it's great <laughs> and I think it brings a lot of people a chuckle when they see when they see them going on their merry way so we're walking along and then all of a sudden like just by <laughs> the wetness of the environment. I'm looking at the dog and he's just like, his whole underbelly is mud. His feet are disgusting. And I'm like, oh geez, this will be fun. So thankfully I do think a bit ahead and I, I do pack sort of a, um, 
my husband calls it a bug out bag <laughs> because it's like, okay, something's happened. Let's freak out and get something out of the bug out bag. But it's just like basically, you know, things like in an emergency that you need, including towels, right? And, and with kids, it doesn't necessarily have to be an emergency. It's just about like kind of a convenience, right? Like you want to not be caught without diapers if you have babies or, um, you know, whatever. Snacks, definitely. If you have your kids, they're constant snack masters I don't know why but um so I went into the back of the car got the towel at the end of our walk but like before that at some point my my son dropped the dog leash which brings him a little bit of distress when that happens because like he just like the dog doesn't go anywhere he stays with us he's very um he's an older dog he's about um 11 now and and so he for him it's like there's no excitement to freedom it's like whatever I've you know I do what I want anyways I, I walk around without a leash he's not like really gonna run away but my son gets really upset because he wants to be walking with the dog so that becomes a calamity and my son will start like chasing the dog <laughs> and the dog doesn't run from him because he's not being aggressive or anything but like yeah it's just a little calamity so my son will sometimes get a little bit you know flustered and and he fell down into the mud and so that was fun it was like his bum his hands his legs like his pants were just disgusting <laughs> it's like no so the one thing i forgot to do over the holidays like over the break was to repack our our like diaper bag with clothes for the because i always bring an extra set of clothes for kids because you never know what can happen like this so then you know we get him up and we were almost on our walk anyway so we continued and you know he was fine he, he's over it immediately he just wants to walk so that was all good but then as we're walking back to the car again my son drops the dog leash <laughs> And then he picked it back up and he got it sort of somehow underneath the heel of my daughter's shoe. <laughs> and so she didn't realize what had happened. And all of a sudden he tugged the dog leash because the dog was kind of like stuck under my daughter's shoe. Um, well, the leash was. And he couldn't get like momentum. So then when he pulled the leash, my daughter got knocked over and she fell on her bum. So it was like her hands, her pants, everything are covered in mud. And she's just sitting there looking at me like, okay, mom, what now? <laughs> you know, like not upset at all. Just like, oh, geez. So I get them all back to the car, I get a towel, and I wrap up the dog into like a dog burrito and <laughs> place him on the floor in the back of the car. And he was content to just kind of sit there and wait for the next step, you know, <laughs> like what's going to happen to me now sort of thing. Um, and so then we went on our way home and I had to like take my son's pants off because they were just drenched and then my daughter and my son I took their shoes off because like the car would have been annihilated with mud um so yeah that was our walk yesterday pretty exciting stuff um <laughs> I try to sort of informally follow this concept of a thousand hours outside like every year and we actually did pretty good with it last year I think that you know with what's going on in the world we have a little bit more of an opportunity to get outdoors because that's like a safe thing to do so we do a lot of that and I'm really happy to be out there and walking and having fun um, and it's also just really good for the body like if you have back pain um you would be amazed at how much just a daily walk of like even you know like as much as you can i would say i would say i started out not being able to walk as much um after having like both of my kids it took me a while to kind of get my mobility back to you know what it was as is common um my first pregnancy i actually had to be on bed rest for several months and so that was um that was a little more challenging to come back from um, and back pain was the biggest thing but i did go to physio and i got some you know great exercises to help me out and um walking most definitely was something that you know really helped me and i'm thankful for it so yeah, we do this program. So I do try to get out like every day if I can. Um, and and we are good most days. I'm just going to take this little bit of book spine and put it right there. I am working on a very complex custom order journal, which I don't do that often, but 
um, this particular lovely friend of mine, she always gives me really inspired ideas. This particular book, though, is giving me so many challenges because I'm sometimes I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, not always, but there's just some challenges with it because it's kind of a complex concept. So I'm working away on it and hoping that, you know, her patience will endure. <laughs> I think they will. We've already talked about timelines and she's pretty loose. So that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, you know, you got to push yourself. So I've been working away on that. I am thinking I have another um, a series that I'm going to be coming up with soon. I'm probably going to start filming it this week. Actually, it's going to be an ephemera making series with a theme. I don't want to give it all away quite yet. Um, but yeah, there will be that. And then I will be doing an update soon on the Roxy's uh, Journal of Stitchery um, because I have been making some progress on that. I've been doing a little bit of like um, trying to figure out like what I want, how do I want to finish my sampler and I um, somewhere in the wood I um, sort of have decided to do this like way more complex than I'm used to floral type embroidery at the bottom of the piece and um, I've been working on that a little bit and I found some great videos there's a YouTube channel if you're not familiar with it I say check it out because they've got really beautiful tutorials on embroidery it's called um, two sisters embroidery and wow just gorgeous gorgeous so definitely I would recommend it it's beautiful I like this but it's quite thick you know um, can I split it? I can. This was the um, project where I waxed some paper that had um, a measuring tape stamp on it. And I just want to use a bitty bit of it maybe here just to add a little something more over there. Alright, now let's just stitch around this, I think, really quick. One moment, I'm going to stitch for one minute. Okay, so we are all stitched around now. I just went around the edge of this. So we have our big pocket. And again, I just want to kind of go page to page, adding things as we go, thinking of each page as its own spread. So I'm happy with this. The other thing I forgot to mention is I did stitch around all of these um, these folios once I got all of the um, collaging done and dry. So let's attach this pocket. I'll just pop a little glue on the edge here. Oops, forgot to take that out. A little tiny bit because that's kind of flipping up a little. There we go. Okay, good, good. Now. Now I can make a large piece of ephemera to put in here and then I'm thinking also of maybe doing some kind of a small, um, another little kind of pocket thing here possibly, um, or even just straight across kind of belly band, but like a pocket, like a base pocket. So maybe next I will do the ephemera to go in here. So let's use... Um, Maybe this art book that I've been using as a glue book, maybe we'll make a large journal card. Just to get an idea of how that would go in. Yeah, that would be a good size. Okay, and then, yeah, I will do the um, the base thing after that, the, the pocket. So, now we get to have some fun and use up some bird book. Um, where did I put them? Oh, over here, okay. Hold on one minute, just got to resort things here. Okay. 
So I have two bird books that I'm looking to use for this. Um, first would be the Audubon Birds of America book. Um, and it has just amazing birds in it, but they're mostly like full page journal, you know, like pages or cards probably. I wouldn't necessarily want to fussy cut these because like they're full page paintings and I like how they are together. So I think for those, I'm not going to use them for this project. So that brings us to the Reader's Digest North American Book of North American Birds. Um, and it has more what I'm looking for, which are like, you know, little birds that we could cut out. So I need to find one that I think will be an appropriate size for this page. Um, they kind of vary in size. Oh, I'm so like a band-tailed pigeon. I love pigeons. Um, I'm sort of leaning towards something that's a little larger and vertical and you know it's funny i think there's a nice blue jay that might work the stellar's jay and the blue jay maybe the blue jay maybe the stellar's jay i don't know um oh owls you know maybe an owl because the cover of the book is an owl and that might be a really nice way to kind of jump in now it's just deciding which owl the snowy owl's beautiful. They're all beautiful. Oh, wow, the great horned owl. But then we lose the snowy owl. This is my, my never-ending challenge with these kind of books. It's like, oh, the barn owl. I think the barn owl. Yeah, let's go barn owl. Um, I hate losing one of the, <laughs> the images of the beautiful birds. Although I don't really care about the prairie falcon as much. It's kind of a scary bird. <laughs> Although when I was doing Defemember I had a giggle because I was watching one of Barbara's videos from 49 Dragonflies and she was talking about how barn owls, these the way that their faces are, that Louisa finds them scary. <laughs> and I thought that was cute. Now I may keep the um, the label intact. I may add the, the types of um, birds that I use throughout this because I feel like that could be like a nice ode to um, this being like a bird, you know, folio that a, a birder could use if they wanted to. Um, yeah. So now I'm just going to continue to tear around here because we're going to make like a, this will be our focal point for our collage. So first thing that I want to do, I think, is just, I want a background of some kind. So again, I'm reliant on scraps for this because I'm really trying to desperately use up scraps. So let me just pull my scraps over here and see what we have. What is this? Okay. This on its own already has birds on it, and that's in my scraps. I love the background. I don't love this like this image a lot, but the background, love it. We'll use the background. <laughs> so we'll cover up the scary bird, and we'll use the owl. So I'm trying to decide right now what kinds of like collaborations and challenges that I want to do this year. I have the Marguerite Miller, um, I'm going to be doing Marguerite Miller's Collage Weekly Planner this year, but I'm not sure what other kinds of things that I want to participate in. I may end up like looking for a group of people who would like to do a collaboration this year. I think that would be nice. Like I do like watching the collaborations that like a lot of the, um, the larger channels do. Um, but it's hard to break through into that because you're not a large enough channel yet. So, you know, it's nice maybe if, um, I could try to pull together a few of us who are just kind of getting started or we're a little smaller that might be a nice thing. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just lay my focal point down on here, but I won't glue it quite yet because I think I want to add some other elements to this um, before I glue it down. So let's see what I have. I'm 
just want to grab my bits from over here. I have all these bits that I've been kind of clipping and keeping and whatnot. I have so many things that I just really want to use up. So um, I just want to see if I could pull a few bits from in here. That would be nice, I think. I have all of these technical drawings that I think are kind of cool. So that maybe I'll try to use one of those. Um, this is like leftovers from making like tickets and stuff. I might tear a little piece of that off. Let's see here. I kind of need to mix these all up again because I've got them. I've got so many bits and bobs, but they're all kind of like in the way that I created them. They're all like layered together. Hmm. And we have tea bag, some tea bag. Okay. I think that's all I have in the bits and bobs right now, maybe. Possibly this little flower. Okay. Should show you this book that I found actually too. I just found this um, when I last time I went thrifting and I haven't shared it yet. Isn't it beautiful? Midsummer Night's Fairy Tale. It's just kind of sitting there. I was thinking about saving it for my next Friday book haul, but I don't know when that will be right now. But um yeah, it's a really pretty book with fairies. And kind of a different style to it. I think these well, yeah, like this, these images look like they're actually sculptures that are photographed instead of just being illustrations. Yeah, so it's photographs um, by John Lawrence Jones, photographic art direction by Brian Froud. Yeah, an interesting book. But anyways, let's get back to it. Okay, so now we will lay down our owl here maybe. And then I think I might just build up a layer with this tea bag because it kind of gives a nice bit of blocking, like to kind of focus the owl. And I'm thinking of just tearing around this oak leaf. There we go. Maybe over here. And a bit of this technical drawing, I think, down here. Just thinking about like science and how, um, you know, ornithology and like mathematics and technical things all kind of go together, really. Gonna tear out all these little things that I stamped here. Okay. Okay, I think we can get started with laying that down and then I might need to add something more, but we'll see. So, I'll start from the top, just gluing this little bit here. And this here. This is just kind of my way of like not totally messing up the whole placement of the collage. Okay, so we can lift this, I think, off, then um, glue down the technical drawing. It's 
so I'm trying to decide what to do today. It's a very snowy day today, so I think probably a walk is in order because it won't be as muddy. And that's a good thing. Okay, now this whole thing. Yep, that's where we'll place it down. Gluey fingers, gluey fingers. No. Where are my for the reach? I need baby wipes. whole thing down now. I'm really wanting to start a couple of new journals. I definitely am in the mood to do like another vintage book journal with some kind of a sort of um, a commonplace book type theme, just like a different things kind of book. Really want to dig into my um, collection of vintage books and start making some journals again. But I really wanted to get into this folio first. I felt like it needed to happen. I don't know if a green, a little green leaf would be good on here too. No, no. You know this. I think I like this as is. It just needs a bit of ink on this white space. There's a lot of elements here already, so I think what I might do is just add a bit of gold um, after I trim, and I might stitch it as well. So I'll trim this off the bottom here. back this onto some nice vintage book paper from that Audubon book. I also think I need to coffee dye some paper today and I need to go to the grocery store because I want to make guacamole which means I will also be doing some avocado dyeing. So that might be a good project to do today and maybe make a nice sort of slow dinner. Of like dreading having to go back to work. I've been off for so long. I'm like, <laughs> will I remember how to do my job? I've been watching a lot of, um, you know, goodbye 2021 kind of videos, and I think everybody shares the same sentiment that we're happy to see the year gone, which it's kind of sad, but I've definitely been feeling it myself a little bit of like just, I don't know, I, I'm not someone who typically is very bored. Like I have a lot of hobbies, I have kids, I have, you know, a lot to do, but um, I've had this weird kind of overwhelming bored feeling a little bit this week. And I don't know if it's just because like I'm not working, although I am thankful for that, but um. Yeah, it's it's like I, I guess I just miss friends clearly, and also um, being able to do things like go to art galleries or you know group nature preserve walks and um, classes and museums and galleries. But yeah, we'll just have to wait. I think unfortunately right now things are going to get a little worse before they get better because of um, the way that some of our, I don't know, people in charge are just strange. I'm not sure how decisions are being made at this point, but that's another story for another day. 
Hmm. Got a little crooked here. We just got to even things back out again. There we go. And then on this side too. There. All right. So I think I'm happy with this. I'm just going to stitch around it. I shall return again momentarily. Okay, so we are all stitched around. I added, um, while I was stitching, I just added a piece of my eco-printed fabric to the bottom here just to add a little interest and a little tug spot because this will be going into an upper tucked pocket. So I think I will just ink here. And then one thing that I've been thinking about is, you know, in my wish to use up scraps and such, we don't often do much decorating on the back of our ephemera. But I do think, you know, without using up too, too much space on the ephemera, you can add a little something lovely to just, when that person is writing, you know, here's a little bit of inspiration to just um get you going and like also you could use word snippets um that kind of thing um let me see what i have there we go we have following morning let's just add that cute little word snippet because it's nice would it be up here maybe yeah Here we are. I just fold this gluey page over before I stick myself to it. Um, now let's go back here. I'm going to add a little bit of gilding wax around the edges to this and maybe I will even use a brush to do so so that I don't get my fingers all gold. Let's see. Where's my gilding wax brush? There it is. Way back here, I think. Yep. Yep, yep. tend to just use like an old stiffer brush for gilding wax because it picks it up in a way that's kind of similar to your finger that it's not too flexible so it holds on to it better you can just put this on your finger but it's kind of difficult to get gilding wax off your hands not as bad as uh, Fabri-Tac but <laughs> also no fun But I'm still going to get some on my hands because that's just how I go with things. Okay. Here we go. And maybe just a little bit of random gold here and there. using up the last of the gilding wax off of your brush if nothing else it's good to okay and then um this barn owl label needs a little ink i forgot to ink it there we go okay so that's good to go into our folio That's okay. A little bit of magical gold there. Nothing to complain about. Okay, let me just grab this folio here. So then this will just tuck right up in here. Yay! Love it. Super cute. Now I want something for down here. So. 
I think what I'll do is just take this page that I had glued together, just kind of give it a measure for how far across I would want it to go. And I think about here, yeah, right about there would be good. So then um, let's just clip it here. And we'll decide how long do we want this to go? Maybe about there. Okay. Yep. Because that'll give me another little spot to tuck other things. I like the idea of sort of layering these pages. So we'll move that over here. Pop a little more glue in here. It's already quite stuck together, but we'll just pop a little more to just do the job. Then um, find out what we want to cover this with. How do we want to present it? And again, I go to scraps for this. And I have kind of a fun scrap of cork here that I think would be really great. So let's use that. That's a little too short. Just use this little bit of cork. And I think I'll even throw a little bit of this cork, these little pieces, into my... Um, I keep this kind of scrappy bowl here now on my desk because it's another way to just use things up. Like if you have them here, you will use them. The challenge will be not filling it too full, <laughs> it's spilling everywhere. Um, but I'm kind of keeping like a bit of a scrappy, like a um, like a more dingy kind of theme, like things like old book spine and you know tattered papers, things like that, parchment. Okay, so that gives us a nice cork base. I'm going to stitch it. Um, before I do anything else with it. Okay, so I just stitched around the edge of this. My reasoning for that is just because cork can be a little bit of a difficult material to work with um, and it can break easily. So it's best to just kind of do something to protect it. And I'm thinking about maybe putting a tab of some kind on here. Um, I've got this old folder left over. Thinking something like this would be kind of cool. Snip that off here, maybe. Okay, so I will just get the glue out and glue this. I may run some stitching down it as well, just because I like how it looks. Oops, I put it in the wrong spot. I wanted it over here. <laughs> there we go. And I'm thinking of another little word snippet to go on here. I need to cut more word snippets, I think, the next day. That could be cool. Song of a Bird. That's perfect. The Song of a Bird. <clears throat> I had a book um, that had a chapter with this title. And I grabbed as many of these out of it as I could. This one is very delicate. It's a... Uh, I'm not going to use glue stick because I don't want to rip it apart. Oh my goodness. Oof. Can I do this without destroying it? We'll see. Um, okay, it's down. <laughs> there we go. Alright, let's just let that dry a bit. Um, 
I don't know that it needs any stitching, to be honest. I think it's fine. Yeah, it doesn't need it. It doesn't look like it needs it. Um, <clears throat> but do we want to put anything on here that would kind of bring some interest? Maybe like some brightness, like one of these leaves. Let's remove the backing here. These leaves have this plastic backing. It's best to just take those off because they add unnecessary bulk. Some of them come off quite easily, but for whatever reason, this one is being difficult. There we go. Okay. Does this have it on the front? This one is just different from all the others, so I don't know. Maybe that. And then maybe, um, oh, you know what I have? Hmm. this. I have this little stamp that I cut out as a sample. I wonder if I put that on there and inked it and do we have a little scrap of a bird maybe? Possibly some fabric. I haven't put any fabric in here yet. Hmm. Except for my eco printed fabric, actually. It's always good. Like a little collage down there. This has some printed leaf on it. It could be cute. Let's just commit. <laughs> but I think what I want to do is tone the color of the leaf a little if I can. Oops. The gluing's not too important. I'm going to stitch this definitely. Need a little more ink. Yeah. Tone it down. All right, that doesn't want to stick. We're going to definitely stitch it. But we will ink up this stamp a bit. Out there. Just a little bit of glue on the back of the fabric to just kind of hold it on there how we want. This here. And this kind of here, I think. Whoops. Okay, um, that's good. And then thinking about down here, like, does it look naked now? I need like a natural element or something. I'm not sure. Or maybe a little, I have this little sprig here. I could stitch a few of those on. Yeah, I'm going to, um, I'm going to lay some of these on here and I'm going to stitch along as I go. So I will return momentarily with this complete. Okay, so it's finished. I stitched around the fabric um, and then I added these little sprigs and just stitched over them. Did two lines to just secure them. I think they're mostly secure in there. I don't think they're going to come out. So they're something nice that, you know, you can add that doesn't add a ton of bulk, but it does have a little bit of like a relief texture. So now we can add this into onto the folio page down here so let's just take this out for a moment then um just come over here with our glue i'm gonna use art glitter glue to attach everything to the main folio okay so i just had to pause for a moment so that i could just double double triple check if I should add something more to these and I am going to add a staple to each one of them just to double make sure they don't move so I love how these look these are actually these really nice green gold staples they're like a little mini staples that I found while thrifting so we're going to go ahead and just um glue that down again um just that extra assurance that nothing is going to move. 
because you wouldn't want to do all that work only to have it come apart. Okay, there we go. That's in there. All right, we'll just let that dry a moment. So we'll put the piece of ephemera back in here, tuck it back up in here. Now, I did make, um, as part of this series that I was doing when I was making the ephemera for, for this book, from this book rather, I did make a few different things that I think could go well in this pocket. And some of them have some bird facts on them, which I think is cute. Um, and I love this little owl on this library card from 1990s, 2000s. Um, and then this is... Um, a little bit about like a, how this bird sleeps so it's nice little bird facts and such so I'm thinking about this bright orangey color giving a little pop of color in behind here so that could sit there then tucking this um, I should let this dry completely yeah let's do that I'll let it dry completely but I'm gonna tuck this in front here maybe I can tuck it in let's see just as an idea then I'll take it all out again and then this here and then I don't think we need this one yet we'll save it but I, I, I'm good with that layout because um, I do plan to use as much of the ephemera I created from this book as possible so now I'll just pull these back out again and we'll just let this lay down and dry. So I think for today we have a video. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll probably make a few more videos on this folio. Um, and until next time, you should check out the description box below for my social media. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. We have a growing community of really fun people here. And um, I'm really just getting started on a lot of really exciting projects that I would love to share with you. I have a lot of great ideas. I think I've been uh, sort of I've been blessed with like kind of this bumper crop of ideas I think for 2022 um, so I hope to see you again soon and take care have a wonderful day bye for now